Good Good morning, everyone. I'm Jim Jaquetta, CTO and co-founder of Innovation. Uh, Today, we have the pleasure of uh, uh, educating you folks on a Streaming Media University uh, workshop. I have my friend and colleague, Neil Matursky, from one of our premier vendors, Avi West. Uh, Avi West primarily does uh, video over IP and uh, bonded cellular. So good morning, everyone. Neil, you want to uh, introduce yourselves? People may know who I am, but uh, tell everybody what you're doing, some of the amazing things you're doing at Abbey West. Yeah, we're, we're really excited to be able to participate in something like, uh, you know, this streaming media university conference, because it, 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 it steps away from the core markets that traditionally bonded cellular have been, been applied in. We're real strong in news and, and, and live sports. And of course, all of those played a uh, streaming, but also, uh, you know, just the emergence of the independent content provider, uh, you know, that, that, uh, you know, is, is starting to explode and really change the way people see and gather, uh, uh, gather and distribute their content and the way people view it. So this is a great forum for that. And hopefully, uh, it'll be worthwhile for everybody. Yeah. So, so we have a three hour block that streaming media has given to us and we're going to break it up into three parts. We're going to try to keep it to 50 minute chunks. So if some of you are staying for the uh, whole three hours, you'll, we'll, ha- we'll try to have like a 10 minute break. So first we're going to talk about live remote at home production. Uh, uh, we've done a lot with sports, uh, live television, live reality TV. Uh, then Neil's going to enlighten us on broadcasting live to social media. Uh, Abby West has this uh, new bundle, this new offering called Be On Air. We'll talk more about that. And it's a, a great way to get into the Abby West bonded cellular ecosystem uh, at, at a low cost. Uh, and then third, uh, the third hour, we're going to talk about uh, enterprise IPTV and digital signage for the enterprise. And then uh, an important trend we're seeing now is, well, when we say IPTV, this is on the corporate land. We're not talking about Netflix or Hulu or over the top. This is distributing television inside the corporate network. But a lot of corporations are empty right now. So uh, over the last year, we've been helping some of our clients take that television system content and bringing it offline, off uh, remote to, to home, Uh, off campus. So we'll talk about that. So first, let me jump into the live remote at home production. So uh, we've been doing uh, Vidovation and our partner, Abby West, we've been doing uh, and promoting at home production, or some of us call it Remy, uh, remote integration or Remy production. Uh, We've been doing this long before the pandemic, uh, six or seven years. Uh, It now has uh, uh, major broadcasters, major sports leagues, uh, live production companies are really taking a second look at the technology because uh, as we all know, we have to work now with under this new new abnormal. So why, why do we wanna do this at home production? Why do we wanna do this Remy? Well, it reduces the number of people we need. So uh, the concept is, you send the minimal crew uh, to the production, whether it's golf or live reality TV, whatever it might be, even news, if it's a multi-camera news, uh, you would send a big production truck or several production trucks, dozens of people, camera operators, producers, technical directors, directors, et cetera. Now with at home, we just send a camera crew and maybe just a couple of technicians. We don't need a big truck. The, the TDs, the directors all work from their home production master control. That's the term at home. We're doing it at, at your home base, your headquarter. But now at home means another thing. Some of these operators are really working at their home. So we have a TD might be in his, in his uh, basement uh, 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 working a, a cloud production switcher, et cetera. So this is the new normal. And uh, another big benefit that's getting the attention of of production companies, producers, uh, is the big savings in cost. You know, rolling a big truck is is, uh, uh, not only expensive, 
but it's very costly and it also saves time. Uh, another problem is when you send a truck and personnel to an event, uh, they're on site for a couple of days, even if it's only a one day event, they got to set up, they got to break down. So your truck can't be in two places at once or your, your technical director can't do two shows, can't be in two cities at one time. So with, with clever techniques, you can do uh, multiple, where, where you could do one or two events a week. Now you could do one or two events a day. And you can, you know, do your East Coast shows in the morning and do your West Coast program in the afternoon. So it gives us that flexibility uh, to use our resources more efficiently. So I apologize if any of these trucks belong to anyone listening. I'm just trying to make a point that uh, I don't think uh, trucks are going to go away completely. I think maybe we'll see smaller vehicles. Maybe we'll see, uh, I, I've even heard people talk about the trucks won't go away, but they'll just stay in a parking lot in the central location, just as long as there's internet. So I think that the trucks will be used in a different way uh, uh, with, with a more central uh, type of topology. So I'm gonna talk about uh, application we've done uh, um, with the PGA. Uh, PGA has ongoing events that they're using uh, uh, Vidovation and Avi West uh, bonded cellular technology for at home production. The first event, actually the first sporting event to come back uh, once we got all locked down from COVID was this uh, uh, charity relief game um, um, in, in May of uh, 2020. Uh, we've done other events since then, but this was like the first uh, major event that happened during COVID. So this was the first, as, as far as I know, the first sporting event that took place in the US uh, 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 during the pandemic it was the first event to open up. And here's some of the, the, the outlets, some of the, uh, uh, we worked with the Golf Channel, which is part of NBC, NBC Sports. Uh, we obviously work with the PGA, uh, PGA Live. So these are some of the, uh, just a handful, uh, th there's many more, but this is just a handful of some of the customers we're working with, with at home and Remy technology. So this is a perfect, description of, of the, the new normal, the new production normal. So you see, uh, they, they wanted to do the golfing event at Seminole Golf Club, but the problem is Seminole Golf Club is a private club. So it doesn't have uh, a level three, a, a century link uh, or the switch fiber connection there. Uh, they probably have never even had a production crew on, on, the, on, on the course, it's, it's a private club. So I forget which one, one of the players, his dad's a member there. So they were like, wouldn't it be cool if we could show the outside world this, this great golf club uh, um, in Juneau Beach and, and be able that, to, to build our own infrastructure. So there was no fiber, there was no connectivity. So we had to come up with something else and, and cellular was the perfect choice. Uh, then the, the local uh, government agency said, we'll let you do the show, but you got to have 50, less than 50 people. So that included the players, the, the officiants, the grounds crews, et cetera. So uh, that only left uh, 28 television uh, 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 people for the television crew. And, and what the PGA did is they chose uh, camera operators that could drive to the event. So they couldn't, they didn't have to fly. So, so that's part of the strategy too. You use local talent, so they don't have to travel far. They don't have to get in the plane. They can stay safe. Uh, you minimize, um, uh, I, I feel that the highest risk of getting COVID is traveling in a plane. You know, you're in that tin can in the sky. If somebody's on the flight with you and they're sick, you're all sharing a, a bathroom in a confined space. So not having to put your entire team on a plane and put them in hotels, which is expensive, and during COVID can be dangerous, this was the perfect solution. Then it just so happens PGA headquarters in, is in St. Augusta, so it's close. So you're like, well, that's kind of cheating. It's in the same state. This could have been in France. This The, the production studio could have been in LA. Whether it's 1,000 miles or 10,000 miles away, it doesn't matter. It, it, the, the technology goes over cellular, it hits the public internet, and then it goes to wherever the master control is. That's the beautiful thing. And then to add another uh, uh, wrinkle to it, one of the commentators 
uh, chose not to come on site. Um, I think he had, um, Mike Tarico has a, a child with um, some sort of immunity deficiency. So he didn't want to leave his home. So no problem. We, they, they sent the camera and the bonded cellular unit to his home. And he was able to watch the live event and do his play-by-play -play, uh, live, just like he was in the studio or just like if he was on the course. So the, the bonded uh, technology was able to achieve that. So uh, then the, the Purdue show went out over digital or over the top and then went out over traditional broadcast. And, and the Abbey West technology has hooks for that. You know, we have uh, our stream hub receivers have SDI output for a traditional uh, a master control workflow, but also have IP output if we want to go directly to, to the web or, or for over the top. So this is what we saw out on the course. So uh, in the T box, they had uh, two camera operators. These are all handheld cameras. So the bonded cellular units mount on the camera. I, I have a close photos of it that I'll get to, but they mount on the camera. Avi West uh, seven or eight years ago was the first vendor to put bonded cellular right on the camera, you know, between the battery and the camera. Um, they didn't invent that idea. Uh, microwave has, has done that for years, but uh, people just love that. And, and I think still to this day, they, they are one, if not the, uh, the few uh, or, or the only one still doing that where it's on the camera. So you don't have to have a backpack, but if you have smaller cameras, we do have backpacks. So these are, are, are um, portable cameras, uh, then two ca more cameras on the fairway and then two cameras on the green. Uh, these cameras will rotate, you know, as the players come through. So, you know, the, the, the cameras on the, on the green might follow the team out as they go. And then the other cameras rotate onto another tee, uh, onto another uh, group that, that's played. Well, this event was only one group of players, but you could see how you could replicate this for each hole or if you want your camera crew following each, each, uh, each, each team, however your workflow is, you can do it. So you see that we had six cameras on, on the, uh, the T, the fairway, and the green. Uh, then we had some microphones uh, on the talent. So um, uh, they had a little uh, uh, lapel microphone with a, a microphone transmitter. And then the microphone receivers uh, are, are near or connected to an Abbey West uh, product. So the 380 does video and up to four channels of audio uh, uh, with, with, with eight cellular modems, the PGA chose to use the Air 320 for audio only. Uh, it does do video, but they chose not to use the video part of it because it was smaller. They deemed that the, the Air 320 with two modems was good enough for audio and it worked perfectly. So you see here uh, uh, the four players, uh, two Air 320s, have, uh, they each have two analog audio inputs. So we were able to cover the four microphone receivers on the four inputs across two uh, Air 320s. Then here at the top, we have Jerry and Steve. They have lapel microphones. Um, I think that the commentators, we had them wear the Abbey West on a sling or a belt clip. Uh, the players didn't want to have that, you know, anything, you know, heavy. It's a couple of pounds or a pound or two, but they don't want anything on their belt. So an operator was nearby to receive their, their uh, 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 microphone uh, uh, received signal. And then there were some uh, beauty shots of the, uh, this club is near the ocean. So they had some nice POVs of the ocean, another POV of the front of the clubhouse. And the Air 220, uh, the, I'm sorry, the Air 320s work perfectly for that with just two modems. Um, you, you really need the, the, the eight cellular modems or the, in the Pro 380 when there's more challenging uh, cellular environments or when you're pushing high bit rate video. But this is a great example of blending the two uh, uh, technologies together, the Air 320 with two cellular modems and the Pro 380 with eight. Uh, then you see here, uh, they had a couple of parabolic mics. Um, you know, they have the little, the little, the little uh, dish to capture sound. You see it in, in football where they try to capture the audio in the huddle. Uh, they have some of that. Now, you can imagine if these cameras and these audio uh, links 
If they were not perfectly in sync in a live show, it would be horrible. One of the, one of the uh, real uh, uh, technological marvels, and, and, and Abby West has patents on this, is the able to do uh, maintain frame accurate gen lock and lip sync across dozens, uh, well, virtually an unlimited number of cameras and audio links. So, so here we have two, four, six, eight uh, uh, videos that are live with a few dozen of audio mics open simultaneously. And Abby West can keep those all in perfect lip sync, all in perfect sync, uh, which is not an easy task to do. And it's attributed to what Abby West calls their Safe Streams Transport or SST for short. It does the bonding and load balancing. It does forward error correction. It does automatic re-requests. It does a form of precision timing protocol to keep everything in sync and everything gen locked. So it is, that's at the heart of this technology. Uh, here you can see um, um, they used eight of the Pro 380s and nine of the Airs, so they had more audio. I've learned this that that um, uh, in production, you know, there's there's usually uh, for every video, there's four to eight audio. So, you know, you, you, you can never have enough audio. So uh, this worked out very nicely. And then having the analog audio inputs for the lapel microphones. Also, a thing we learned from the PGA is that uh, they use that, I don't know, for you guys that watch golf out there, that red line, that graphic that follows the ball going through the air, uh, that's called top trace. And the telemetry of top trace goes through an analog audio channel. So it was very helpful to the PGA to have those analog inputs, not only for the, uh, the microphones on the talent and the commentators, but also for this top trace. And then you can see they had four uh, receivers or what we call a stream hubs. They're really more than receivers, they're transceivers because they transcode, they encode, uh, they take the signals in, transcode them, spit them back out. Uh, they have IP outputs and SDI outputs. Uh, I did mention this, so you can see the, the two different models. The flagship Pro 380 has the eight cellular modems. The Air 320 has the two. Um, again, I have a bad habit of, of spoiling the, the slide. I'm, I already talked about this, but here's that SST or that Safe Streams Transport. It, it's, it's the magic uh, behind the Abbey West. I should also add too, part of the magic is the, the high gain patented antennas Abbey West uses. And Abbey West uses superior modems. Uh, not all modems are created equal. The cellular modems Abbey West uses, they make sure they capture all available cellular bands. They, they uh, uh, other units, uh, they'll fire up in a, in a challenging location and they don't connect to a tower where Abbey West will fire up and connect. And people are like, well, what's the magic? Are you guys cheating somehow? No, it's those additional or those supplemental bands that Abbey West is able to connect to. And often enough, these, these, these secondary bands are underutilized. So it's perfect for us to stream video over. So here's another look at the, at the product. So uh, top left, you can see it mounted on the camera. Uh, Photogs love this. So uh, you only have one battery to change. You know, when you change your camera battery, you're changing your bonded cellular battery. It's great, they, the two work together. I've seen news crews have the camera and, and the Abbey West connected together in a Porter Brace bag with the, with the SDI cable hooked up, all the audio uh, connections hooked up for lapel receivers, et cetera. They pull it out of their bag, within 60 seconds, they're shooting. They don't have to take out a backpack and connect it and, and connect the camera to the backpack, connect up the audio. Everything comes out of the bag, comes out of the case, ready to go. Now, if you have a smaller camera, like the, like the bottom left, you see that's a smaller camera. It doesn't have a, a V-Lock or Anton Bauer battery plate, so we really can't mount it on the unit. We do have some really nice low-profile uh, backpacks for that type of application. Then top right, you see another smaller camera with the air in a nice little, uh, uh, like a sling, an over the shoulder little bag. Uh, and then below that, you see it's small enough to mount on an accessory uh, shoe on a camera, even a smaller camera. So there's options to put the air uh, on, on a unit. 
Uh, one thing we don't have a picture of, there is a, a belt clip. So if an operator, instead of having it over his shoulder with that sling, that, that little pouch, uh, they could mount it on, on, their, on their belt uh, as another option. Uh, then, um, yeah, I'm, I'm repeating myself. So Abby West was the first to put the unit on, on a camera. He, here's a great shot, the lower, the lower right. You see the photog, he's got his headset. You see the, he's got a, a porta brace, uh, a, a little, little support on there. It came out of a porta brace bag. You see the Abby West peeking out behind his head. And the, the commentator is using a wireless mic. Uh, she might even have a wireless IFB uh, uh, receiver in her ear connected to the camera operator. So there's no wires going to the camera operator. We're able to easily bring the, the analog, uh, 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 the microphones uh, in, into the camera, and then also the intercom and IFB uh, coming out of the unit to feed, to talk to the camera operator and the talent. Uh, as I mentioned, Abby West supports Anton Bauer and V-Lock battery plates. You can buy the backpack with a V-Lock or Anton Bauer receptacle plate. Um, there's other systems out there too that that uh, are much bigger. The Avi West is a really really nice tight integration. Um, even the the Pro 380 uh, uh, for what it's doing with eight cellular modems is it, it, is smaller than a lot of the other tech that's out there. Um, here, here's a shot of the uh, uh, I, some of the I/O. So you can see uh, the units have mini XLRs, so the, the, the air here is on the left, and on the right we have the Pro 380. You can see um, we, we sell options. You, you can interface directly to the mini XLRs, but we sell uh, uh, mini to full-size breakout cables. Uh, if you like, we can provide those. And um, it's line level in. Um, let me, um, wh while I have this shot, you can see, let me speak to some of the other IOs that are here. On the top, um, I'm looking. I'm looking at the Pro 380. On top, you got power in. Uh, you see the the Anton Bauer plate to hook to the camera or to hook your battery. Then you have uh, SDI loop through. That's really important. Uh, photographers tell us like, well, if I'm using an Atmos for video assist, if I come in, if I, I only have one SDI out of my camera, I go into the Atmos and then into my bonded cellular. If the battery on my Atmos dies, I lose the feed. Uh, Photogs prefer coming into the bonded cellular, coming out and going into my video assist monitor, if that's how your rig is set up. If the, if the video assist battery dies, you don't lose your transmission. So you got the SDI uh, loop through, you have an HDMI in, and then there's an HDMI out for return video. I have a slide about that. So Avi West can do full resolution, full frame rate return video. And then if you have a LAN connection, internet or a CenturyLink connection or a level three or a, the switch MPLS network, whatever, you can connect it to these two LAN ports in addition to the cellular. So you, you can do, uh, you can bond actually up to 11 connections, eight cellular, two LAN and one Wi-Fi. In the air, you have one LAN connection, one Wi-Fi, two cellular modems, and there's options for two external cellular modems. So you could have uh, two, four, six connections out of the air if you fully uh, populate it. Uh, here's some of the parameters, uh, uh, some of the, the, the uh, specs uh, of, the, uh, of the technology. Uh, Avi West will be rolling out a 4K unit uh, uh, later this year. Uh, but this is, uh, you know, we go up to 1080p 60, four channels of audio. Uh, we can go up to 20 megabits per second, but we can make pictures at, uh, down to 200 kilobits. Yes, it'll be a little bit soft, but a soft picture is better than no picture. And uh, Avi West has proven to be one of the more reliable bonded cellular uh, systems out there. And we encourage you to try it. And you can see the IOs, 3G SDI, HDMI. Uh, analog uh, um, audio inputs. So uh, I'm, I'm going a little bit quick to try to keep this in 50 minutes. So here's another event. We've done several events with uh, Turner Sports. And uh, the first event we did with them was the Ryder Cup. And this was more um, of a hybrid approach. So they did have a trucks on site um, or, or um, 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 
and uh, and uh, they didn't switch the show there. So they had trucks on site. They had uh, video engineers were there shading the cameras. Um, the um, um, uh, but the ISO cameras after they were shaded were all piped to Atlanta, and they switched the show in Atlanta. So there's an example of of a hybrid approach. So so they maybe they had one or two trucks instead of a you know a dozen trucks. Um, they they had less personnel. So. Uh, they also had some commentators in Paris and some commentators in Atlanta. So they needed a little bit more of a presence in Paris because they did have a studio there. So they needed support staff for that. But instead of using the, the portable bonded cellular technology, they used the rack mount technology. They used the, the HE4000 platform for this. So they're a half rack unit and they do four uh, HDSDIs uh, uh, per box, so you can get eight in one RU. And then uh, those were all piped to Atlanta. So they had 16 ISO camera feeds piped to Atlanta. Uh, then they had the Stream Hub receiver receiving it in Atlanta. And then they had four program feeds going back to the venue. So the, the commentators in the studio in Paris could see the live show because, you know, commentators in Atlanta say, okay, back to you, Bob, in Paris. Bob needs to hear his cue. Of course, he's on comms, but they need to see the programming. And then also for confidence, you know, turning the video around that the engineers on site had confidence the signal was getting through because they saw a multi-viewer uh, feed of it coming, coming back out. Oh, and I should add, um, Abbey West has a lot of little features that are very, very powerful. One of them is a multi-viewer option. So sending this feed back, you don't have to have another computer or another rack of equipment to do multi-viewing. These video feeds coming back, we can pump them into a multi-view and have them come out uh, on a single SDI feed and have all your thumbnails up on one screen. So that's pretty cool. And just like the portable equipment, uh, on this event, they didn't use cellular. I, I, they just used a single internet connection and uh, it went SST, safe streams transport through public internet. In my opinion, public internet is, is a lot easier than cellular. Cellular is a lot more choppy, complicated, changing latency. The internet these days is pretty stable, but there, there's times when, when, when the pipe uh, gets in trouble, but the safe streams transport adapts to the changing network environment. So you can see here, they, uh, uh, you can see the, the, the video village. Uh, I don't know if all of those trucks, they're, they're, Turner was not the primary uh, rights holder for that. So some of these trucks that you're seeing in the top left uh, might be for the primary rights holder doing a more traditional workflow, you know, with your truck, with a fiber. But this one green truck lower left is the single truck that Turner brought and, and uh, I believe we're looking here, uh, no, this is master control back in Atlanta, but uh, the, the truck, they had their video engineers, maybe some of their sound guys, you know, doing, um, doing um, uh, uh, um, some, some, some minor production on site, but then all that ISOed and backloaded back to, uh, to master control. Uh, Another category, I, I like to think Vidovation um, uh, helped pioneer with, with, of course, with some of our customers. We, we've helped some of our customers pioneer a new category of live reality TV. So uh, Big Fish Entertainment uh, took the concept of uh, shows like The Cops, like Cops, uh, but Cops was recorded. That was a produced show. They'd go out, follow officers, but they would edit the content afterwards. It wasn't a live show. So Live PD, uh, the producers approached us and they were smart enough to know that uh, a live reality show would be a lot like sports. So they saw some of the work we were doing in sports and they applied that to a live reality show. And uh, uh, we're hoping Live PD comes back. It's been put on a hiatus. We've also done Live Rescue, done other live reality shows. Uh, but the amazing thing, the same things as, as sports uh, uh, applies with this. I say it's even more challenging. You know, we, we have camera feeds, uh, two cameras that we switch live in a cop car while it's going 120 miles an hour down the freeway, jumping from cellular tower to cellular tower, 
keeping this gen lock and lip sync perfect. Uh, and again, it comes back to that SST, that safe streams transport. So, so you can see here, um, if the police vehicles converge on a scene, uh, two, three, four cop cars arrive and they have uh, uh, the live PD cameras in them, we could have uh, six or eight cameras in close proximity, a bunch of microphones all in close proximity. And again, if they were not all in perfect lip sync uh, with each other, uh, um, you wouldn't be able to produce a, a live show. You know, there's no, in a live show, there's no post-production to fix timing issues, fixing audio issues. So it's, it, the technology is really amazing. Hopefully we'll apply it to whatever show you're doing, whatever live production you're doing. Maybe you can think of a new application and we'd love to help you. Here's some of the live PD crew. Um, uh, most of them wear a bulletproof vest. They're in the line of fire. Um, you can see a uh, lower left, this operator chose to wear uh, the, the unit and backpack on his chest. Um, it's kind of hard to see, maybe top right. Uh, he's got the bonded cellular actually hidden in his belly. There's a little pouch that they sewed into their bulletproof vest. Uh, to hold the hold the uh, Pro 380, uh, you know it's the it's the camera operator's choice. You know how he wants to wear the unit. Uh, the top left picture, the person on the right, you can see the set bonded cellular. I can see the the unit, the bottom of the unit, and the battery kind of under his right arm there, underneath his camera. He's wearing it kind of Velcro to to the outside of his vest and wearing the a backpack or the unit on your back is not an option jumping in and out of a vehicle you'll get hung up and they used they didn't want to use uh you know larger cameras weren't an option because a, a larger eng camera when you got in the into the vehicle you'd lose the lens on the door jam when you got in the car quickly uh so they have these nice compact cameras uh uh it's it's not everyone's cup of tea i mean it, it's a law enforcement show you know they're not finding people at their finest hour, uh, but it, it's a testament to our, to our technology. Uh, this is really cool. So this is how what, what happens in master control. Uh, each of these four operators, there's another bank of them. They're in as many as uh, eight or nine cities. Each of these operators is watching the, 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 the feed coming in from each city and then putting metadata, you know, uh, G if there's a gun, D if there's drugs, and, and uh, 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 the metadata is put in there. Then a line producer bottom left is watching uh, these feeds as they come in. The feeds as they come in raw are dumped into EVS or something similar, uh, uh, an instant replay system, again, like sports. So uh, these guys were really smart and said, our workflow is very similar to sports. So they partnered with EVS uh, uh, to, to can this, to can the live content and record it. And then they play it back and, and they play it back usually within 15 minutes. So uh, the FCC allows you to call content live if it's 20 up to 29 minutes old. So, you know, there's safety reasons why they can't go live live. You know, you don't want to, they're about to kick in a door because the bad guys now know the cops and live PD are in their town and they turn the show on if they're involved in criminal activity. So they know uh, that would be, it would, would tip off the bad guys that the bad guys are about to break their door down. So then the line producer lower left is watching the recorded video, trying to find some clip that's interesting. Then the line producer puts a package together, you know, a five minute segment of a group of cameras from a given city. And then he cues that up as a package and plays it back in front of the director as if it's live now. So now the, those five, four, five, six cameras go up on the viewfinder in front of the director. The TD then can take control. And the director, as it's playing back off the EVS, the director's like, okay, take camera one. Okay, take camera two. The only difference is the director can't tell a photog to correct his shot because it's already recorded. So there's line producers watching the live feed and giving the camera operators instructions like, Hey, 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 you're losing the frame. What are you doing? Where are you going? Uh, or, or they're in comms with them. You know, are you, you know, don't, don't all the camera operators change your batteries at one time. You know, want to cascade it so they can keep a live show going. So it's a very cool workflow. 
Um, maybe you can think of a, a workflow. We're doing a lot with sports. We're doing a lot with fishing tournaments, believe it or not, uh, putting bonded cellular out on boats in the middle of a lake. That can be very, very challenging. There's not good cellular out on, um, on lakes. So um, I think there was a question. Uh, I think Neil, my colleague Neil answered it. Um, the, the Pro 380 does H.264 and HEVC. Uh, there are models of the air that do HEVC and then lower cost models that only do H.264. So for example, the flagship Pro 380 does 264 and HEVC. The Air 300 series, uh, uh, 300, 320 uh, does HEVC. The Air 200 and 220 does H.264. If you just want an encoder, because um, Abbey West's HEVC and H.264 encoders have amazing quality. If you just want a field encoder and you're not really interested in cellular, the AIR 300 has no modems. So you can broadcast over Wi-Fi and the LAN connection. The AIR 200 does H.264 has no modems and you can broadcast over uh, uh, LAN and Wi-Fi. And the AIR 220 uh, Neil will talk about in the next section as part of the Be On Air offering, that low cost solution that Abbey West has rolled out. It's a great way to get into the Abbey West ecosystem. Uh, here are, uh, I'm keeping an eye on the clock. Here are some of the, the functionalities uh, of, of the Abbey West ecosystem. So of course we can go live, you know, couldn't do much without doing that, go live. We can record, so you don't have to have a live show. We can forward the the recording we just made so we record something and forward it so if you're doing some of our customers will do more of a produced show but they have a tight timeline so they want content they grab uh on wednesday in la to be ready for uh, a thursday show yes they could overnight the media from the camera but it might get lost by fedex or uh what if fedex doesn't show up on time um this is a method of, of recording something, capturing it in the, in the camera or in the pro and then forwarding it. And then uh, we also can do a simultaneous live and record. And Abbey West is the only vendor that uh, has a second encoder in their platforms just for recording. So why is that important? The recording becomes most important when you're in a cellular area that's challenging. So what our competition does is they record the live transmission. Well, if I'm in a challenging area and the bit rate has dropped uh, and I got kind of a soft picture going out, I'm recording that soft picture. So well, that's no good, that, that, that doesn't serve me. So if you, if, you, if you do go into a challenging area or they've done this in live PD, uh, uh, the, the, uh, a high speed chase ended up in the middle of a cornfield in the middle of nowhere uh, and the video had dropped down to like 500K. The audio was clear. The picture was a little soft. It didn't help that it was, the light was kind of soft. You know, there wasn't a lot of light, you know, so, so, it, it, so it, 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 being softer and then a darker image uh, 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 weren't, weren't ideal. So, so what we were able to do is when they broke away from the scene, uh, I happened to be in the studio with one of my colleagues from Abbey West we showed the customer how to go into the unit, pull the high resolution or full resolution recording, pull that through, and then play that clip back to the audience when they broke away from commercial. And it's little tricks like this that people think the live PD show is faked, that, that we're uh, somehow recording it, producing it. Because even the live stuff, the quality is amazing, and uh, uh, people think it's fake. And then the last thing we can simultaneously re record and forward. So you're, you're forwarding the file as you're recording it and you can almost do like a near live. So maybe the file arrives a few seconds late or a few minutes late to master control. So we're near live. Uh, then over here on the right, we have some data hotspots, an internet and VPN connection. Uh, Abbey West uh, has this data bridge capability where you can extend the network of your master control or even your cloud, extend the network out into the field. You can have assets in the field on the same subnet as your studio or your cloud. 
which is very powerful. That I have a slide that will speak to that. So that's powerful for for telemetry, uh, uh, camera control, PTZ control. Uh, Avi West has rolled out 5G connectivity, but it's it's sub six gigahertz uh, technology. Uh, we have video return. I mentioned that. So the HDMI port, uh, the the HDMI output on both the Air and the Pro. Uh, can be a video output with a, a video return from the studio. You can have multiple video returns. So you could have maybe like, just use Live PD, for example. Maybe Studio A needs to see a, a, a return feed of this. Uh, location B needs to see a different thing. So there can be multiple uh, return feeds. Then uh, Mishik Centric, uh, that's more for news workflow. Avi West is able to integrate with... Um, uh, news automation systems. So uh, a producer can put their shows for the day or the evening, uh, uh, you know, tie the script, tie the assets. Uh, then when the operator turns on their air or their pro, oh yeah, I'm in LA for the news conference. They click on that. Then what they record is tagged and identified as a news conference in LA. So the operator and the production people don't have to think about it. You know, you have hundreds of feeds coming into your, your news bureau. It's very easy to lose track of what's what. So this, it brings the news automation out to the field and starts the, the workflow and automation uh, at, at the camera, which is great. Um, then here's some, I'll go into this quick. I don't want to run out of time. So here's some of the topologies. So uh, uh, on the left, it's, uh, you know, we're home running the whole show from, you know, we got cameras and we're home running them back to the studio. Uh, some customers will, will have a small truck or a small flyaway kit on the right here. So they'll have a smaller van and they'll switch the show on site and send the produced uh, single uh, feed back to master control. Uh, maybe they do, they, they'll switch the show on site, but then at master control, they'll add their graphics and things like that. And then you can see these blue lines uh, for camera control, but here uh, the switcher could be unmanned. We could be sending telemetry through that data connection to actually control the switch, to switch the show remotely. So again, minimizing the operators, but then we cut down on the number of bonded cellular paths we need. So whatever topology works for you. Um, this is a cool thing. So I kind of touched on this, doing multiple events at the same time or in the same day. And, and with a single production cr truck or a single crew, now your crews, yes, if there's overlap of the show, camera operators can't be at two venues at the same time. But if the shows are staggered, you can share uh, your TD resources, your, your switcher resources, your master control resources, your directors, you know, your, your uh, um, uh, knowledge workers, your expensive workers, your, your EVS operators, your directors, your TDs, they don't have to travel. They can do more than one show in a day. They can do uh, dozens of shows in a week instead of two or three shows in a week. So there's a better ROI. There's more work for the people. Hopefully they'll get paid for that extra work, but uh, uh, you, you get, uh, it, it's a cost savings uh, we just all have to get used to uh, not traveling as much or working from home. Uh, so again, here's another slide uh, showing the, the SST, the safe stream transport. I kind of touched on this already. So, you know, network aggregation or, or load balancing or that bonding mechanism, we're taking a bunch of smaller pipes and we're bonding them into a bigger pipe. Uh, forward air correction, automatic re-request, load balancing. Oh, and there's a really cool feature, Avi West, of network priorities. So I mentioned like the Pro 380 has two LAN, Wi-Fi, and eight cellular. Well, cellular, there's a cost associated with that. If you have an inexpensive internet connection, you can set that as the high priority, set the cellular as low priority, and the cellular will kind of act as a backup. So the, the, the LAN connection will carry most of the load, but if I've done this demo in front of customers where we pull the LAN connection out, we have a, uh, we call it what, backhoe fade. The, the, uh, the, the LAN connection, the internet connection just dies. Somebody yanked out a cord and the unit will 
instantaneously take over on the cellular. You don't want to turn the cellular modems off because they'll take a, a, a you know 60 seconds, 45 to 60 seconds to boot up and then negotiate with the tower. So it's better to have them on this standby and low priority, which is a good great feature. Uh, this is just another slide, you know, showing you, uh, you know, we have the pro, uh, we have rack mount um, models and the air models. Uh, this is another uh, picture depicting uh, PTZ. Uh, here's another slide. So you can see uh, HDMI, SDI are carrying our, our video feed and then the data bridge or the data hotspot is, is carrying the camera control through the Abbey West uh, for PTZ, for painting, for shading, uh, just about any camera function uh, that you can control via IP, we can, we can uh, control this way. Um, these are just some slides. So you can see here the little cloud with the in and out arrow, that's to turn on the function. You know, you turn it on. It's pretty self-explanatory. If you have the license, uh, you turn it on. Uh, we do have the ability to do some IP routing in the Stream Hub transceiver. So if you don't want to have things on the same subnet, we can we can route the traffic uh, accordingly. Um, we also work with a partner, CyanView, which specializes in camera control. Uh, you can see here in this picture, we actually have things on different subnets. So uh, we have subnet A, B, and C. Um, you know, because you want the controller maybe not to get confused which cameras it's controlling. So in your controller, you can just have settings to, you know, camera A, camera B, camera C. And the Cyan View stuff, uh, the Cyan View tech, uh, you can have um, 50 or more cameras in, uh, in one controller. Uh, this is what happens in, in, in the transport layer. Uh, uh, live video obviously takes priority in the pipe. Uh, but we guarantee, uh, I think, three to 500 kilobits per second of, of minimum of data transport while we're live, uh, so you can control your cameras while live. Uh, again, you see that little cloud that indicates that the, 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 the pipe is live, the connection is live. Uh, so here's the vendor. Uh, uh, we've partnered recently with CyanView. They specialize in in creating camera control for specialty cameras, but also cinema, news, ENG cameras, just about, they, they pretty much, uh, there might be a few cameras out there they don't support, but they're, work, they're bringing out support for new cameras every day. What's really nice is it's really meant for camera control over an unmanaged network, like the public internet or bonded cellular or both. Um, uh, they make a nice RCP. And you, of course, you can have an RCP for each camera if that's what you prefer. Uh, but uh, a lot of a lot of productions will set the iris, set the camera, and forget it. Just leave it for the show and just fine tune. Um, what's nice is it's designed to go over public internet. And what it does is this little small little box you you Velcro to the side of your camera, and it actually mimics the RCP controller at the camera. Because if there's a disruption or a dropout or uh, too much latency, cameras don't like that. The, the, the CCUs are designed to have instantaneous or extremely low latency, which public internet and bonded cellular, you know, we're, we're going to have some latency. So the uh, Cyan View streams out all those rough edges. Um, I, I'm, I'm mindful of the time. Uh, here's some of the customers we've worked with, or I mean, they're, they're, this is just a, a, a smattering of, of, of a, a few of the customers we're working with. Uh, Turner Sports, uh, we did the Ryder Cup, Champion League, PGA, Major League Fishing, uh, A&E, Fox, Discovery Channel, uh, should add the Golf Channel, NBC to this, Live Rescue, Live PD, First Responders. Um, let me see, I don't wanna to go too long. Oh, you can see here in the middle, you see the little arc? That's how you set the priority. So you see the top, the LAN connections and the Wi-Fi are set to high priority. The cellular are set to lower priority. Um, some of this might be a little redundant. Let me just- Yeah, I think we're probably you know, at a good point here. Okay, okay. And then uh, maybe I'll, I'll end at this, Neil. This is the, uh, the um, the uh, six, uh, uh, the 5G uh, units we're shipping, it's sub six gigahertz. 
Uh, it has six cellular modems instead of eight. Sprint has bundled into AT, has been absorbed by T-Mobile. So we have three major carriers. So uh, uh, we're provisioning the six uh, modems to Verizon, to AT&T, to T-Mobile, and then the Air will have two two modems. So all right. So let me let me. Uh, so folks, if you want to take a break, one of the me, things, one we'll of the ahead, things that I would like to to just kind of touch on that you know you did a, a great job, I think, conveying uh you know Remy production. And when you were touching on the file flows, uh, one of the things I want to mention is what we've really seen as well is you know across other areas such as you know film production or you know uh, scripted production of them wanting to go Remy as well and doing it strictly in a file-based workflow where, you know, using the live stream, the director and multiple directors can be, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, in one location, they don't have to be on location while they're shooting, but they're not utilizing those streams. Yes, they're recording the stream, but they're, they're utilizing the full res recording, then transferring that into the, into the workflow uh, and it goes right into the editing NAM and, and they post produce the show. So it's beyond just live TV shows that we're seeing the, the you know, the, the application of the technology and it, and it working well. Looks like uh, we've got a couple of questions hanging there, Jim. I don't know if you want to uh, address, okay. I tried to address some as we went along. Uh, so uh, I see so many, uh, did you answer that? some health concerns? So Abby West uh, in, in France and Europe in general, uh, how human safety, uh, it's, it's high here in the US, but it doesn't get any higher than, than Europe and it doesn't get any higher than France. And uh, uh, in order to meet uh, Euro or European Union regulations and French regulations, uh, they had to do extensive tests, um, um, you know, body absorption, that kind of thing. So the, the antennas, uh, the systems are designed that uh, an operator can be in close proximity and while maintaining, while maintaining safety. Um, there, if, if someone is concerned, there's no reason why you couldn't have the unit you know, away from an operator. But uh, Avi West, we, we have some documentation actually on, on some of those uh, safety uh, tests that have been done. They're quite impressive. Um, someone's asking about price. Um, we, we should discuss that offline. If you reach out to the, the Vitovation sales team, uh, we can talk to you about price. We will be mentioning some pricing uh, on the next presentation with the Be On Air uh, offer uh, that, that we will be discussing pricing. But every application is, is, is different. And I like to say, we try our best. Uh, uh, in most cases, we're able to find a solution for everyone uh, at virtually any price point. But you know, it's gonna be more than a dollar, but you know, uh, uh, at, at a reasonable price when we can find a solution. Real, real quick, maybe before we go, Neil, I mean, if, if someone needs to step away, of course, but this I'm, is like- I, the, I kind of need to step away. All right, Neil, if you step away, I just want to talk a little right. bit about the cloud, like I, this slide right. that I have up, because so many of us are doing cloud. So on the left here, uh, we have our, our asset in the field, the pro or the air, but then uh, uh, we also have out in the cloud, um, uh, vMix or Grass Valley AMP or whatever cloud production tools you're using. And the Abbey West Stream Hub uh, comes as a physical stream hub that you can put in your master control. The physical stream hub has IP outputs, but it also has SDI outputs. In the cloud, we haven't figured out a way to how to do SDI outputs in the cloud. I'm joking, but uh, we have IP outputs. So you see these bubbles. We have obviously our SST, this safe streams transport output in the cloud. So we could talk to another Avi West stream hub asset in the world, but we also have SRT and SRT is kind of the de facto interoperable uh, I, video over IP transport standard. So your vMixes, your Titan Live, your Grass Valley AMP, whatever production tools you're using in the, in the cloud probably have an SRT in or out uh, capability. But then we also do transport over IP. Uh, we do RTMP, HLS, RTSP, and SDI. Um, I should add, uh, it says here NDI coming soon. We've already started shipping NDI. Uh, Web RTC, I know that's important with gamers. Uh, um, we got 
uh, that on the roadmap and Simpty 2110 coming in and out of the Stream Hub. So the Stream Hub is available uh, in a Docker format as Linux software. Uh, we, we spin up instances in AWS and, and other uh, cloud providers. Um, um, oh, I see, good, good question from Brad. What's the difference between SRT and SST? Uh, SRT is good. I mean, we, we, we've all used it. Um, uh, SST is like SRT on steroids. It, it's just a higher level. Um, uh, no one can bond multiple connections together like Abby West does. That's a big part of the resiliency. Uh, dynamic forward error correction. You know, forward error correction, if you turn it on and forget it, in a good connection, you're wasting bandwidth that could be for video quality. So having the FEC dynamic, uh, having a robust ARQ. So uh, we felt that we needed uh, interoperability with SRT. So of course, we're, we're, we're supporting that, that, that standard, but uh, uh, SST takes SRT to, to, to another level. Uh, let me see if there's any other questions. Um, No, somebody says, does it impact the latency? Um, the only time, um, the lower limit on latency is about 500 milliseconds or half a second. It really depends on the network condition. So whatever the lowest combination, so if your LAN connection has horrible latency, we'll have to increase the buffering to, 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 to utilize that. If, the, if, we, if we run the unit more aggressive at a lower latency, say a half a second or a second, but the LAN connection has a three second delay, the safe streams won't use it. It'll ignore it, it says it's not, 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 not good enough. 